So the standard purchasing workflow, so the workflow in which I use to purchase materials or inventory, starts with uh, the purchase order. So, so the first step is for me to do a purchase order. Then after I send my vendor that purchase order, my vendor is going to put the product together, put it in a box and ship it to me. Then when they ship it to me, the next step to follow is to go from purchase order to receive inventory. And then when I receive inventory, I have two choices with bill or without bill. Um, so I use with bill when the existence of the bill, the existence of the accounts payable, the, the invoice from my vendor, I have I have access to, right? So if I have already received the invoice from my vendor or I have access to seeing what the bill is going to look like, um, then I'm going to choose inventory with bill. Also, if the person receiving the inventory also has access to that information. Now, if um, the QuickBooks user does not have access to the bill and you don't want that inventory receivable to become an accounts payable, then what you can choose is without bill. So let's use this option. So let's say we're going to do receive inventory without bill. And then the next step is at some point in time, I'm going to enter the bill against that inventory so that I can have my accounts payable department, write a check or pay with a credit card, whatever. And then finally, when I have that bill, then I'm going to go to the last step, which is a pay bill. So that enter bill against inventory ends up being the same thing as enter bill. And then the last step, um, after entering bill against inventory or a regular enter bill is to ultimately pay that bill um, with that function. And we talked about earlier how important it is for you to use the pay bills function, not the right check function to pay an open bill. So let's do um, workflow step by step. So the first step is I'm going to do a purchase order. Okay. So in this purchase order, I'm going to select my vendor, whoever is it that I buy stuff from. So I'm going to pick uh, this vendor here. And then I'm going to go into item and pick what product I'm buying from them. So let's say we're buying from them a pump and we're buying from them 150. And then I'll pick another item here that I'm also buying from this vendor. And let's say I'm buying some sprinkler heads and then I'm buying, let's say, 80. Okay. And these are $17 and 80 cents a pop. Okay. So down here, that's the total amount of my purchase order. That's how much I expect uh, to pay my vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and select the date of the original purchase order date. So let's say this is the day that I actually told my vendor I wanted the product. And we'll put here uh, December 1st, 2017 as the example. And then we'll hit uh, save and close. So that was the first step. The first step is we create the PO, print it, email it, do whatever. My vendor is going to now take that PO and fulfill it and send me the product and send me an invoice. So the next step is to click here where it says receive inventory and then I'm going to receive it without a bill. Okay, but let's assume that my inventory receivable process is separate um, than accounts payable paying my vendor bill. So let's say a couple of days later on the 5th, that's when I actually receive the inventory. So I'm going to pick uh, my vendor, which is this one right here. Then the system's going to tell me, whoops, um, before you keep going, make sure that you pick an open purchase order. That way you don't have to type the information over again and you can receive against the PO so the PO doesn't stay open. So it doesn't say it in so many words, but that's exactly the message that it's trying to transmit. So because I already did have a purchase order, I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And then in this screen, which is actually pretty cool, it will tell me every single purchase order that's open. Right. So if there's multiple purchase orders open, my choices are going to be there. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one purchase order that I had created and then I'm going to hit OK. And then what QuickBooks is going to do is going to go ahead and select every single item. It's going to tell you the description. It's going to tell you how many you're receiving, the cost, the amount. And depending on what functions you have open, you're going to see more or, or less columns in here. And then when I'm done uh, receiving this inventory, I'll click on Save and Close. And after I hit save and close of this um, item receipt, um, what's going to happen is uh, it's not going to be, let me hit escape here. What's going to happen is it's not yet available for me to pay the bill because um, it's not a bill. It's just an item receipt. So if I try to go to pay bills and I won't see my vendor there, so it won't be available for me to pay. However, if I go to the vendor center and click on vendor center and 
I go look for computer services by DJ, it is going to say that we owe them some money because we did receive the inventory and for accounting purposes um, that needs to be there. So I'm going to see this transaction here called item receipt, which I can double click on it and I can always uh, see it. So that was the first step was to do a purchase order. Second one is to do an item receipt. Then at some point in the future, we actually get the bill and the best thing to do is uh, if you just follow the workflow in the home page you click on enter bills against inventory and then you're going to have a, a, a box that says select item receipt and then i'm going to select uh, the vendor so i'm going to go search for the same vendor that i'm using here and then i'm going to see every single item receipt that i have if i happen to have multiple and when i click on that and i hit ok uh, then it's going to actually convert that item receipt to a bill and you're going to notice that um, the little checkbox up here, it says bill received. Actually, if I uncheck that, it actually takes it back to the item receipt. So that's basically what it's doing is putting the little check mark. And then at that point, I can actually put the arrival date of the inventory. So let's say it's the 13th. That way from the 13th on my, whatever my terms are, let's say it's net 15 days, it starts going from there. Now, the other things that happen at, the, at this piece of the workflow is uh, when you receive a bill much later on, sometimes the dollar amounts weren't 100% correct. So at this point, I can actually make any corrections that I want based on what's in the actual bill. And I can actually uh, maybe add some sort of a shipping charge if, if that wasn't included from the get-go. And I'll add whatever this shipping charge is. Because it's actually very common that on the purchasing process, we don't really know what the shipping charge is. And my vendor just sends me the invoice with that, uh, with that amount and, and we just pay it then. Also, on the reference number, this is where I'm going to put the actual invoice number from my vendor. So whatever the invoice number is, I'm going to read it off the, off the paper and put it in there. That way my accounts payable matches their accounts receivable. Okay, so I'm going to hit save and close. Um, so now I should have an accounts payable. I have to make sure that this dollar amount up here matches that dollar amount up here. So for whatever reason, um, it didn't uh, add it correctly. So I'll just finish adding it there. So I'll hit save and close. And then uh, now I should be available to pay this bill. So when I go to uh, pay bills here, so it's the last piece of the workflow. And let's say later on in the future, I pay the bill. I should see my, my vendor bill there. So there it is. So I put a little check mark there. I mark it and I tell the system I want to pay this bill and then I tell it how I want to pay. So let's say, for example, I'm going to pay with my credit card because I don't have any funds in my bank account and I want to pay with my credit card. So instead of selecting a check here, I'll select credit card and then I'll pick whichever credit card I have the availability in for me to pay my vendor. And then I'm going to hit uh, pay selected bills and that actually pretty much uh, finishes the entire workflow. So that's the workflow purchase order, receive inventory create the bill against the inventory and pay the bill. That is the entire inventory workflow. Now, some of the things that can happen too is maybe some of the product was damaged and we had to send it back, for example. So I'm gonna get a, vent I'm gonna get a credit from my vendor because I'm gonna ship them back a couple of damaged products. Now, the tricky thing is that there's no uh, button that says vendor credit. So it makes it kind of difficult for, for, for a user to counterintuitive somehow figure it out. Notice that even if they click on vendors in the vendors menu, there's no option for vendor credit. So you kind of have to know this by heart, right? It's the only really way you'll be able to do a vendor credit is by knowing the mechanism. So in order to create a vendor credit, you have to create, uh, click on create enter bills. It's a little bit counterintuitive because a bill is sort of the opposite of a credit. A bill is something you pay, credit something that they owe you. But up here at the top left, there's a little box that says bill and then next to it, it says credit. So if I change it from bill to credit and I click on that button, notice that now it's called credit. And at that point I can, I can choose my vendor's name. So my vendor's name was a uh, computer or something. Yeah, there it is. And let's say on the 14th, uh, I'm going to send them some product back that was damaged, right? So I'm going to put, um, let's say the sprinklers, let's say 17 of them were bad. So I'm just going to put there, uh, 17 and they're going to give me um, $18 of credit a pop. So by doing that, I basically create uh, a vendor credit of $306. Hopefully I'm taking those 17 sprinkler hertz out of my inventory, putting them in a box, shipping it to them. And what that does is next time I owe uh, computer services money, I can use that $306 towards a future purchase, or maybe they'll send me a check, right? That, that could happen too. 
So I'm going to hit save and close and that finishes uh, the vendor credit.